What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the show. Today we have a special, special MMA Vice edition because I'm joined by my man, my brother from another mother, the Barbarian, Conan Silvera. What's going on, man? Are you here working hard, going for another victory, looking for another win? That's the way we do. So we're here at American Top Team. He is the man at American Top Team. Uh, and for those of you who do not know, we're going to get into his past, his history, because he is one of the true pioneers of MMA. I mean, we, we could talk pioneers of MMA, but he was doing this way, way, way before even I was doing this. So... Um, that means I'm old. Yeah, that means he's old. But let's, <laughs> so, like, you're from the first generation of, like, the Carlson Gracie fighters to come to the United States and represent. Definitely. It was the first one to come to the States to really um, bring his name and um, the, the flag and open a school here and represent him. That was in the 80s, the, you know, the end of the 80s. So, um, yes, it was the first one. So how, did, so how did that come about? Like, you, obviously, you're from Rio de Janeiro, and you guys were obviously fighting, you know, Valley Tudo back then. Right. And what was it like to come here, and how did it happen? Like, what, what was the, you know, did they just pick your name out of a hat, or how did that happen? Actually, it was a, a, a mix of a dreams coming through. Um, and the, the way I say, uh, I was always, since I was a kid, I was thinking about coming to the United States. That was my dream. Everything that I thought about it, everything, then any toy I had it, has to do with American, has to do with, you know, from here. Um, and when I had the chance to come over, you know, of course I didn't plan anything, you know, and somebody said, oh, I want to do this, of course, but I always had in my mind that eventually, if I have the chance, I will definitely want to go for it. And that's happening, you know, I came to stay here, live here, you know, when I, when I packed my stuff from Brazil, and uh, I was in Brazil, um, I, I knew then I was never gonna come back to Brazil. That was my buy and I was never gonna go back. The United States was my home without me thinking than it was. So getting here was, um, you know, like I think anybody, any immigrant that comes here, I mean, I didn't have any papers, I didn't have any place to, I didn't know anybody. I was like going for, I worked from a dishwasher to uh, pool construction or to uh, bus boy, waiter, and all those jobs that you people do when they, you know, they don't know the language. I didn't know anything about it, still don't. <laughs> so I'm learning every day. Um, but it was, you know, in the fighting, I always was there, you know. I was, I was trained with my brother in some match from somebody in some school, wrestling school. Um, and building little by little to the time then I was able to have the school open, not work in another place because it was a time then I was teaching Jiu Jitsu and working as a bouncer in a, in a club and work in the morning in a construction. So when I, I had the chance to fight in the extreme fighting, that's when it opened the doors for me. It was, I exposed myself, you know, as a black belt, a fighter, and from there it was just, we're here. Now, I remember that. I remember watching that. It was like the tournament format. I remember you ran through, who was it, like, Gary Owens? Gary Myers. Gary Myers, right? Yeah, and then, that, uh, was, uh, th that, that was my last fight that gave me the belt. Yeah. The actually, what are the the battle cage extreme fight that I had in mind? The the the, the promoters, and actually the producers, was to make it an American champion, but it didn't work. <laughs> because, the plans, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think I agree with the plans, because um, they uh, the way they you know you you fight three fights in the same night, and I didn't have time to rest between fights. You know, I'm not saying intentionally, but I was, you know, I was really prepared for that. You know, I had my goals and I want to, so any sacrifice will be easy. Like we spoke mm -hmm. about that before. So um, just that, you know, I say, you know what, it's my chance and I'm going to grab with everything I have. And from there was, you know, everything was fine. So I remember you telling me a story about fighting in Canada. Right, right. So, I mean, for those of you who don't know, like, Back in the day, MMA was like, it was like the Wild Wild West, and it wasn't legalized in a lot of places. It was a criminal act. Yeah, it was a criminal act. So get, let's, let's hear that story about going to um, Canada. 
the second edition of the uh, uh, Battle Cage Extreme Fighting was in, uh, actually, I'm sorry, the first one was, oh no, actually was the second one, I was defending my title. Um, they, the plan was for them to do in, in New York. Back then, um, McCann was, you know, inside, I believe and he's still very, you know, connected with boxing or as a, a boxing fan, I don't know. But he, MMA was illegal, 100% illegal, especially in New York. And New York, you know, matter of fact, it was one of the last states to legalize MMA, right? Mm -hmm. So um, when they find out that the uh, Battle Cage was having a show in New York, McCain went on TV, national TV, and put a hit on us, say, I'm going to find you guys, I'm going to arrest you guys, and uh, I know I'm going to prosecute you guys. In the middle of the night, Three o'clock in the morning, the the staff of Battle Cage was knocking everybody's door, making getting everybody ready to leave. They they leased a 747 plane, put everybody inside, and we flew to Canada. Because the way they sold the Canada idea was then if you find an Indian reservation, they have their own laws, so nobody can say anything. Huh? All right. So, yeah. so, of course, the Indians got the money, you know, they got paid for that. I think it was back then it was $60,000, $70,000 to just allow us to use the arena and, you know, go pay-per-view. So, we are in Canada after this whole running from McCann and crazy packing. And everybody's like, okay, everything's fine now. And that was in the week of the fight. Um, as you, everybody knows, you cannot arrest anybody if you don't have any evidence. So pretty much the government way to the fight to happen to come to arrest us in a hotel. And we, I mean, I was so happy, you know, I finished my defending title in a minute and 50 seconds, you know, I, I was fighting Carl Franks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I, I TKO him, you know, the, I mean, it was great. No one, I didn't have one scratch, I was so happy. Um, I, if I'm not wrong, uh, Half Grace defended his title too. So we all planning to celebrate together. So I am in the lobby, the hotel lobby, you know, talking to some friends and, you know, let's go eat and this and that. And I see it on the corner of my eye a group of uh, probably 30 police officers walking to the lobby. You think, hmm, I'm gonna know what they're here for. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what's my question. Yeah. I mean, somebody beat somebody up so bad, they, 30? I mean, that's a lot. So I see the guy then was leading the police officers going to the front desk and, um, you know, asking, the guy comes to my direction, to me, with uh, Igor Zanovia, the middleweight champion, picture, and asked me if I knew him, you know, for a second, I'm like, I'm not gonna know. I'm not gonna say that I know him because I don't know if he's in trouble or not. I say I have no idea who it is, and I'm thinking that he probably did something wrong. That's why you know he's a MMA fighter. They have to have some more cops to arrest him. As I'm this whole thinking going to my my this whole thought going to my mind, he comes back to me with my picture and says, you don't know Igor, but you, don't, you know Kona, right? And I look him with a smile and say, I guess so. <laughs> and my question was, <laughs> Get out of that. I mean, like, as, I, as they are uh, uh, searching for the people, they were sending police officers to the doors. So it was not even a, a question that I could leave because I was no place to leave. I was the first one in the lobby to get ready to go, you know, celebrate. So he said, hey, I got to arrest you because um, um, uh, uh, legal, illegal prize fighting. And I heard that illegal prize fighting is less than I take it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You don't, go, you don't go to jail because of that. But it became a political issue. The government was showing to the Indian reservation they don't have any power. It's still uh, Canadian laws everywhere. So it's not such a thing, oh, you have, you're injured, you don't have to follow the law. So, make long story short, they arrested us. They took us to, um, uh, to the jail on Friday. Um, of course, they treated us good because every single uh, uh, CO on the, on the prison was watching the fight. They're all fans. 
I mean, nice breakfast. Of course, in prison, it's not nice. <laughs> but, you know, the reason why we were there was not because a crime, it was just because a political, you know, issue. So they made us go into the court on Monday, you know, stand up. In, in Canada, the court is like with the wigs and the black... Um, uh, you know, like the old times. Really? They had yeah, like, they no the kidding. Week. Yes. They wore those? And, yes, and they the, wore that. And, yes. Every single one. So the thing was, you know, let's show to the public that we have a power. About 75% of the people inside the court was media. It's just us. So they will go one by one, standing up in front of the judges and the prosecutor, and say, you know, I promise not fighting in Canada anymore. Six months later, they dropped the charge. So that was just a big waste of time. Just, just I mean, just a big... Just making a statement. A big commotion, a big scene. Uh, they want to just prove something, and, you know, um, that's it. But, you know, that's it's, it's a story that happens in the MMA, you know. Well, I got to get into another story, because you were, besides that controversy, you were involved in another major controversy, probably one of the first UFC controversies in UFC Japan. With Sakuraba. Sakuraba. Oh yeah. my God, my my friend. He's my friend. Yeah. Um, there was a. I will tell you, I'm not as you, you know me for a long time, you know, and I'm not a fear guy. I don't have that feeling. At least, or probably I'll say I have a good relation with that. So I'm. I don't feel fear. I don't. I'm not scared about shit. But that in Japan was a time. That time was like. I don't speak the language. I don't understand shit what are they saying. I am in that home and I felt that you know what? They will get took my will take my life in a second if I'll say no. Pretty much I fought Sakuraba in the first first match. I won. If it was a mistake from John McCartney, it doesn't matter. You know, and it was visible that I was winning the fight. Mm -hmm. So he stopped the fight and in that tournament, it was the first tournament, UFC tournament. Then it was two Japanese, one, uh, Tank, and myself. So Tank fought, I don't remember him. Um, was that Andrew? Andrew, yes. Yeah, you, yeah. Yes, yes. I don't yes. know how I remember yes. that. I remember that, though. And he, they beat each other so bad, they, they both could not come back. But they had a reserved guy. They have the, 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 the replacement guy. But it was just one Japanese left on the whole tournament. They didn't have any more Japanese, not even on the single matches, it was just American, Brazilians, you know, from different countries. So like having a card, having a show in Japan and not having a Japanese winning, yeah, that'll be a imagine. my God, that would be a disaster. That would be a national problem. Yeah. So um and I was with Sakuraba, so I won. Nobody from the, the first fight, that was Tank and uh, Angel, yeah. that was his name, right? And um, so now I'm thinking then they're going to have the final fight, me and the guy then was waiting, the replacement guy. So they decided, I don't know how, and I still don't know how they made it, me come back again. But uh, between that to happen, once I'm mean, like all happy, you know, I'm in the finals, I'm gonna, I don't know who I'm going to fight. <clears throat> uh, they knock in my, my dressing room and say, hey, you got to go back and fight Sakuraba again. I'm like, what do you mean? I just won. How am I going to fight? Is it going to be another time? No, no, no. In 20 minutes. I'm like, no, I'm not. When I say I'm not, and then we have a conversation, you know, I kind of look outside. And when you see the guys in the black suits, you know, like standing by my door, I'm like, doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. I think that what I had, I gotta say yes. Like, Wait a minute. I say, I think then, right in that second, I kind of you know what? I don't care. I don't think that is more. Is, is, winning is no more important than me stay alive. Yeah, you know what I mean. Because yeah, no, I that. felt, I felt that I was going to have a retaliation. I felt that my life was in danger, and it, you know, even my point say, "Man, do you see the guys outside?" And that's just what you saw. You know, there were like ninjas in the uh, corner. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you saw yeah. in my bedroom, yeah, but uh, there were dudes checking behind the walls. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you know what they hide. Yeah. <laughs> 
anyway, so I'm like, you know what? Um, you know, I talked to Carson and, and I say, I'm gonna go back. You know what I mean? Because I feel that if we, I don't, we're gonna have a problem. You know, and I, from that, I think then mentally I was not that anymore. I was just like, you know, I want to go back to the hotel, and this is exactly what I did. After the fight, I lost. You know, I was in. I say, okay, all right, well, you want buy? See you later. And you know what? I'm leaving. I went to the hotel and I packed my stuff and I went to the airport. Just like right away. I huh? mean, right away. I fell. You had like a. I fell with probably. I mean, the only time in my life that I was not able to defend myself. Yeah, I mean, you know, what could you have done at that point? Yeah, and people, you know, when people, what they they know about this, you know, because he's he's part of the MMA history. You know, a guy, the only MMA fighter, fight the same guy twice in the same night. <laughs> I never, I never heard anybody, or I may be wrong, maybe yeah, it happened, but I don't remember seeing anybody that fought twice the same guy just because, just because. Anyway, so I was like desperate to leave Japan. It took me some time to go back over there because you know the bad taste in my mouth was just like you know, it's just not fair, you know. And, and like I, you know, I think everybody knows. Finding in another country, it is a one option. Or you swim with the guy, or you knock him out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure, because you can't really... You can. You can't win a decision, and you can't win a controversial fight. There's not such a thing. Yeah. Always going to go to the other side. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Always. So, now you're full-time coach, head coach in America Top Team. What was the transition like going from being a fighter to, to a full-time coach and... What do you find more satisfaction in? I would say that I'm blessed to be in that in this position because it's not the is the title of a head coach, and it's just the fact that my passion kind of a uh, you know stretched from be fighting, fighter and coaching. As fighter, I was already coaching because you know remember I start not fighting, I start coaching. Teaching yeah, right, for sure. So I always had the, the 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 ability to you know be able to explain and make people understand. I think then I use a lot of the old school uh, 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 mentality, the methodology, but uh, I believe then I follow the evolution together because I have to think some of the things I think about MMA has to do with being old, but. Uh, it's a lot of new things that we have to pay attention and you have to open your eyes and say, okay, that doesn't work, let's change. But I do believe that today my, my, my vision and my opinion has to do with the mind of the fighter. What he really sees the way he thinks. Because if you, if you think right, I don't think that physically it's hard for anybody to get in shape. You know, it's just about yeah, it's just exercise. Doing, yeah, doing the work. Yeah. Exactly. You don't have to think about right. it. You just got to do it. Yeah. The problem is when that comes in, you have to connect everything together in one point and bring this, the whole package, the fight. I do believe that fight is still to today. I believe it's getting better, but uh, not the number that I like to see it. They give, they give a lot of attention to the physical part, to the technical part, and it's not wrong. But don't forget, when it gets to the 20 minutes, when it gets, actually not the 20 minutes, when it gets to the week of the fight, your mind hits you hard on that. Because it's, that's about thinking more close you are from, from the fight, more emotions, more questions, more pressure comes to you. And fighters, they kind of way, you know when you think they cutting weight is a ah! No! Alright, somehow the video cut off and it didn't catch the end of that interview with Conan Silvera. I'm embarrassed, but I can't pull the wool over your eyes. I gotta own up to that mistake. Listen, I'm gonna catch up with him later though because he is a true pioneer of the sport of mixed martial arts. He was in that first wave of Carlson Gracie fighters that came to the United States back in the early 90s. He's been there through it all, and he's still one of the top coaches in the game today. So I definitely need to catch up with him and let him tell his story and give his philosophies and insights on mixed martial arts. So I apologize, but I can't pull a wool over your eyes. I made a mistake. So I'm going to catch up with y'all again next week. 
Hopefully I can catch up with him. If not, I'm going to bring to you guys more fire. I'm spitting fire, and I'm going to catch y'all again. Peace.